elements of, uh, of Washington along with the other two great cathedrals uh, that are here. I think the temple itself is probably one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever seen in my life. And we're absolutely delighted that it's located here in Maryland. It certainly adds something to our state. I said I think it's fantastic. It's just fantastic. Why? I'm not sure why, but that's how I feel. I just thought it was fun. I liked it a whole lot. I liked all the different things in it, and the colors and everything. It was real pretty. The serenity of it was the thing that struck me most. Just a peaceful serenity. Well, it's very elaborate. On the other hand, it is. It seems like there's an awful lot of luxury, almost luxurious, let me put it this way. All the whole thing to me is, I mean, the crystal chandeliers and the cushions and the whole bit. When we began, we wondered uh, how we might best cause people to want to come. And the interest that has been manifest in coming to see the temple has been greater than any of us ever expected. And here we are before the opening for the general public and all of the tickets that we had planned to control. The traffic here are already gone. When all the telephones were ringing at once, well, sometimes we would turn the, the bell completely off with the understanding that the who was sitting there, as soon as she hung it up, would, would take it up again because someone would be there because the noise became so loud and so bothersome to the other people who were trying to take orders on the telephones that we couldn't cope. One customer called the telephone company and complained that she'd been trying for three days to get through. He explained that we had 10 telephones manned constantly, but he says, Madam, if they had 100 telephones, it still wouldn't take care of the demand that we have for tickets to go through the Mormon temple. Washington, D.C., capital of the United States of America, a city of well-known monuments. Now a new landmark has arisen, and it too is receiving a prestigious welcome. How do you do? Yeah. President and Mrs. Ford joining in a reception with Spencer W. Kimball, president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and his wife. The Mormon Tabernacle Choir invited to perform in the Kennedy Center. to commemorate the completion of a striking new edifice just a few minutes outside of downtown Washington. Taking the Capitol Beltway toward Kensington, Maryland, you come over a rise, and there it is, lifting majestically above the landscape, the Washington Temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, for Mormons, 173,000 square feet of white Alabama marble, six liquid gold-covered spires, rising nearly 300 feet above the ground, and perched atop the highest, a two and one half ton gold leaf statue of an angel called Moroni. With an ancient scripture in one arm and a trumpet to his lips, he heralds his message to the world beyond. From any angle, it is a spectacular sight, the newest landmark on the Capitol horizon. On September 9th, President Spencer W. Kimball, world leader of three and one-half million Mormons, and his second counselor, Marion G. Romney, arrived to seal the cornerstone, officially completing three years and $15 million worth of construction. An interesting sidelight is the fact that this temple, as with all Mormon temples, was completely paid for before the cornerstone was laid. Then, as is traditional, for a few weeks prior to dedication, visitors are invited to view the temple and its grounds. During the ceremony, President Romney explained the temple to an interested press and public. We're here to mark the completion of the erection of this magnificent temple. A temple is not an ordinary meeting house. A temple is the house of God. It belongs to God. It's his dwelling place. 
from the earliest times people who have known the true and living God have builded houses to him. It's a place where God reveals his presence to his faithful saints. You could almost feel the presence of the Lord there. That's what I feel. I don't know about the others, but that's what I feel. It's nothing outside the world you know, that can be compared to. Well, this is a real, truly great experience for me. I think the temple is one of great beauty and a great addition to our surroundings here in Washington. And it's a, really an inspiration to all of us. And I don't know when I have enjoyed anything quite so much. It's in my mind a wonderful creation of six years and it stands high in the outskirts of our city and for all of the people here on the East Coast to observe. I'm from Ohio. My wife's from Indiana. We're both Methodists. And it's a place of worship and of course we worship the same God and we worship the same Christ. And so for that reason I feel uh, a worshipful attitude as I walk through the building today. There are certain sacraments that take place in this building that uh, I think we all believe in. And uh, I certainly wouldn't be one to find fault with uh, a way a group of people decide to carry out those sacraments. Uh, sometimes I think we have to spend money on creating more beautiful things, that life is more than just, you know, eating and sleeping that life is made up of, of beauty, and this is certainly a thing of beauty. Very impressive, uh, very inspiring. Uh, I, I would call it simple rather than ostentatious. It's great beauty in the night, huh? Great church. Uh, most, most interesting thing. Oh, it's very beautiful and inspiring. It's fantastic. What do you mean when you say it's inspiring? What does that mean? Well, uh, anything that causes you to look up and think about things that have eternal significance. And beauty. And beauty, I think that's inspiring. This is going to be here permanently for a permanent good for many people who aren't even born today. Very beautiful. Very massive and very, uh, I think it's impressive the anywhere. Baptismal found. Why was that significant? It was uh, well, they had the oxen representing the twelve tribes of Israel, and the uh, the size of it. I don't know why it was so big. Or did it mean anything to you? Yeah. What did you think about it? I thought it was beautiful. I mean, the whole concept of it just seemed beautiful. I really don't have never been, you know, into anything more than or anything or even known about it, but I just, I'm interested. Temples to the true and living God are built by his faithful saints, often at great sacrifice. And they're always built with the finest materials and by the finest craftsmen that can be assembled. Well, you think that you know that it's going to be a, the house of the Lord and it just has to be right and it has to be the best and, and, uh, and you do everything to make it as fine as you possibly can. The temple is an intriguing structure. It is 16 stories high, but has only nine levels. It is laced with thin marble windows, invisible during the day, and has a fluting-like vertical design that seems to lift the eyes to the spires above. From any angle, its glistening walls are reaching skyward, as is Moroni, who, according to Mormon theology, was an ancient American prophet. Fortunately, there are guides to answer questions and explain the significance of details, like the symbolic medallions on brass doors found at all entrances to the temple, medallions representing such things as the stars, the earth, and the seven dispensations of time, or the inscriptions on outer walls, and of course, the artistry of hand-laid, faceted glass windows. The glass is about one inch thick and is chipped, 
or faceted, on one face to increase the natural brilliance. The tracery is a part of the pointed arch motif used throughout the building. By day or night, the windows make a colorful accent to the marble finish. The craftsman did such an exquisite job that it's hard to believe that it could be done now when everything is made out of plastic and houses or boxes. That the craftsmen who did this were so fortunate, and the architect, because the work is it's just, it, there's, the marble is so thin, it's transparent in the windows. The stained glass is done by hand and set into stone. This is exquisite, and I don't think the craftsmen could find this kind of work anywhere else. I wonder what the, the men are doing. And to be able to have this opportunity to work on such a beautiful piece of art. It's, again, it's a, a feeling uh, of pride of, of doing the very best, and I think I've watched it through the building. I've seen many, many examples inside the building where it could have been hidden and was going to be hidden. What they were doing, you would never see afterwards. And uh, still the workmen weren't satisfied and took it down and did it over because of their pride. We can sometimes uh, do much with detail and just the way a building is put together without having to go to great extravagance uh, to achieve it. And I think that uh, this is part of the inspiration that we have received that We've been able to achieve a, a, a fine building, a delightful building, a, uh, an inspirational building without just going uh, all out of bounds uh, uh, as far as the, the price tag is concerned. The temple is for special ordinances, the eternal marriages, and the uh, baptisms for the dead. Remembering that Paul said, else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why then are they baptized for the dead? So this is not new to the world. It's the revival or restoration of many of the blessings that have been known before. Well, when you talk about many of the blessings that have been known before, I hear many times you're talking about the unifying of the family. How does the temple come into that? Yes, the, t the temple is basic in the lives of families. The, fa the father and the mother are married for time and all eternity by authority which has been granted by the Lord Jesus Christ to his leaders. That cements the father and the mother together. Then when children are born, they're born what we call under the covenant, and they belong to their parents forever. As we return and do work uh, for our ancestors in the temple here, we are reminded of the covenants that we made at marriage. We are also uh, reminded of the instructions that we have received here uh, as to our purpose here in life, uh, why we have come to this earth, and what our objectives as a family should be. The most important thing to us is that we can be together eternally. That this marriage of ours is not just, you know, for this life. It's for always. And we'll always have our children with us. And taking it further, we'll be with our parents and their parents. And I look forward to a happy reunion with my Heavenly Father someday. I think that if you really love your family, if you want to be with them, there's no greater blessing than being able to seal yourself with them for eternity. I'm going to be married in that temple, this one, <laughs> for all time and eternity, to a guy I really love. There's lots of things I should say. It's very interesting. What, uh, are, you, are you a Mormon? Yes. What does the temple mean to you? It means a place where you can where a family, where family stays together and stuff. Where family stays together. Or keeps the family together. Do you want to be kept together with your family? Yes. yes. Why? Because then, then we go up to heaven, we all be a whole family. I was baptized in 1906, August the 19th. I was baptized by Elder. Thomas E. Ricks and confirmed by Ella J. C. Paul. What, what has this temple meant to you, the building of it? 
Clyde don't know all I can say that has made me feel very happy. I felt so happy since I've been here. <laughs> Hell, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I just, I didn't know I, I know it is the true gospel of Jesus Christ and that this is God's work that's going on. And I'm so thankful that he's let me stay here long enough to see this. It's really a, a standard of, of truth that the world is looking up to. And uh, it's kind of a, ironic in a way, but uh, people are looking up to it and they're trying to fathom what it means to them. But we in the church, I feel it, it's, it's something beautiful, something firm and solid that gives us a, a way of happiness if we so choose. It means family unity, uh, eternal aspects that uh, are really a consolation to me. I recently lost my grandmother and my family grieved quite heavily over it, but if they really understood the eternal plan and the meaning of temples and what we can do, it would put a lot more peace in their soul and a lot more comfort in, this, in their expectations of this life. I think it means uh, a lot of chances for a lot of people to in this area, even if they're Mormons, to grow greater in their knowledge of the Lord's dealings and plannings and preparation for them. Uh, this building of the temple is something special. It's, it, uh, it has uh, a lot of purposes that uh, are really important. Marriage for time and eternity and baptisms for the dead and uh, work for the dead and sealings for the dead and so forth. Uh, we think are t of tremendous importance. The church, you know, has spent millions of dollars uh, in getting genealogy and finding out about our ancestors so that work could be done for those people. So the, the temple work is a, is a vital part of the work in this church. So it's really a family church. Everything is based on the, on the family. That's the basic unit. That's what the Lord wants. Uh, he's designed his church that the family is the key effort, and it's all built around it. We come to the temple to be sealed, and that family unit will last forever. As I said before, it's kind of fruitless to think things the end will, would, would really end here, and that by the promises of a temple, that uh, I can have a choice woman uh, for a wife and have a family and really increase that love through a family unit, and what, which will conquer death. It's really great. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't think that I could stay with this lovely family. The Lord sent them to me to trust them to me for a short while and to raise them and to train them and then they'll do the same for other spirits and I'd be kind of lost if I couldn't keep them. Wouldn't you want your children to be with you and to be with your parents again? Mormons, this is truly the house of the Lord. Entrance to the temple is through this annex. After dedication, faithful members of the church will pass through here into the temple proper to participate in the highest sacraments of their faith. with the temple via a 90-foot glass-enclosed bridge. Mormons believe in a living Christ. Consequently, the only mural in the temple depicts the Savior's second coming. He's shown here on the morning of the first resurrection, when the righteous of all nations are caught up to meet him and the wicked, out of guilt and shame, shrink from his presence.
Everywhere there is a sense of simple elegance and a reverence for fine craftsmanship. chapel for assembly before continuing through the temple. Its gold-tipped organ pipes are reminiscent of the spires atop the temple itself. This is the bride's room, where young women wait to be married for time and all eternity. symbolizing the fulfillment of a righteous life, eternal exaltation in the kingdom of God. wait before receiving an explanation of man's and woman's eternal journey. This is one of several ceiling rooms where couples kneel facing each other to be united in marriage for time and for all eternity. These ceilings, as they are called, and all other ordinances performed in the temple, are available through living proxies to ancestors and others who have died without having these privileges. And there are always the never-ending reflections in the mirrors reminding one of the eternal nature of the marriage and family covenants. From here you move to the highest level of the temple. This is the solemn assembly room where the dedicatory services of the temple will be held. It may also be used for other meetings convened by the leadership of the church.
Now you descend to the lower level to observe the baptismal font. It rests on the backs of 12 oxen, symbolic of the ancient 12 tribes of Israel. It is here that vicarious baptisms are performed by immersion of a living proxy representing a deceased ancestor. After the temple is dedicated for the purpose of fulfilling sacred ordinances, it will be closed to the general public and used to unite families, past and present, into one eternal bond. Time will not permit us to go into further detail, but to say to you that we're a temple-building people. We believe in eternity. We believe in permanence. We believe in righteousness. And we believe that the Lord is at the helm and his revelations will continue to direct us in the paths that we should go.